What's up? It's Joseph Lattman. Uh, welcome back to the real with Joseph Lattman. Uh, story time edition. <laughs> Hope you guys can hear me today. I uh, want to do something a little different today. So I'm out here at the park. I said, why not do like a little walk and talk and uh, give you guys a little story about today. By the way, I got my KDU shirt on. Kick Door University. Shout out to, uh, shout out to Bounty Tank. Uh, Kick Door University. Got that shirt on today. Got the rep it. If you're not subscribed to Bounty Tank, uh, you're missing out. Especially if you're from Northeast Ohio. Go subscribe. His content is cray cray. It is insane. And so, uh, go check out his content, Bounty Tank, on YouTube. But anyways, so today, today's date is July 31st, 2022. Right? And the reason why July 31st will be a day I always remember is because one year ago today, July 31st, 2021, uh, was uh, an incredible day for me. And it was also the day I always look back on as like my starting point for my journey. Right? And so, uh, let me give you a little backstory. So, on that day, I wake up that morning, I, uh, you know, at that time I was kind of just getting by, a little anxious here and there, and just, uh, you know, every day just felt like survival mode with my anxiety, my health anxiety. And so, that day when I woke up, I made it out, I said, okay, where I live is about, uh, if anybody doesn't know, I bike a lot, and so, uh, bicycle. And so I needed something for my bicycle. I can't remember what I exactly I needed. Maybe I needed something fixed. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to wake up. And I'm going to go right up to the bike shop, which is like two miles from my house, if even that. And so I get up. And I start to get ready. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little anxious before I leave because it's hot outside. Like I said, I have health anxiety. So when it's hot outside, I would start to get really anxious and just... Uh, you know, a lot of times I would just take, indulge myself with so much food and just water and just like too much. And so I get up that day and I'm walking out the door. I said, all right, I'll be back. I tell the people inside. And so I start to go on my bike. And as I'm going on my bike, my next door neighbor was outside uh, with his van outside. My next door neighbor's name was Rick. Right, and so Rick was uh, a very <laughs> one of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life. Rick was very creative, very uh, uh, I guess you could say he was funny, but Rick was also uh, a go getter, right? And Rick used to tell me all the time, like, hey, you know, because he's him and I had plenty of conversations like, hey, why don't you, why don't you do, uh, you know, expand your business more, expand when I was doing my landscaping, expand your business more, why don't you, whatever you want to do, chase it, was basically the theme of what he was saying. And so, uh, that day in particular, like I said, I, I leave my house, I start going down the road, I pass, I see Rick outside, and he has this, he had this white van that he had, a big, like white, uh, one of those like uh, commercial vans. You see like Amazon driving around in? He had one of those. And I'm looking at him and he, Rick used to like riding his motorcycle all over the place. He would drive and park his van and he would take his bike out. He put inside the van, Rick put uh, like a little port inside the van where he could put his bike in, pull his bike in the back of the van. He had like a little ramp and everything. And so I look over and I see him trying to get the bike in there by himself. So I, I pull over on my bike and I say, hey, Rick, what's going on? You need some help? And he's like, sure. Uh, you know, he was, yeah, he was like, yeah, sure, I can, I can use a hand. And so I park my bike and we start trying to load the bike. He had like these ramps he was putting on the, uh, on the back of the van to like level it up, you know, so he can get the bike up there. So we're setting up the thing, and, you know, 
we're just sitting there talking, and I had gotten to know Rick pretty well up to that point. You know, he became almost like a mentor to me in a lot of ways, uh, because just how creative his mind was, and just, uh, he was a go-getter. Like I said, he was a go-getter. And so, and he had a lot of businesses he had opened, and created, he had a lot of things that he created. He's one of the most, might be the most creative person I ever met. And so, we're sitting there, we're working and talking, and Rick was, you know, Rick was a jokester, and, uh, you know, so we were sitting there joking around, just talking, and, you know, just talking about life. I, he also traveled a lot as well, because he had a lot of businesses. And so, you know, we're sitting there talking, and, uh, you know, just catching up. It was the first time I'd seen him in a while. He was kind of gone throughout the summer a little bit, and, uh, you know, we're sitting there talking, and he's asking me how I'm doing. And at that time, I was, like I said, I was doing okay. But, you know, around this time last year, I felt really like I was burned out. I felt burned out. I felt like I was, I almost felt like I was just kind of like dying a slow death. I mean, to be completely honest with you. I mean, not that I was actually dying physically, but I just felt like spiritually, mentally, just all around. I just felt like I was burned out, you know, for six years. I was doing the same thing almost every day. And so, uh, you know, and that's basically every day my life revolved around my health anxiety. You know, it was all around survival mode, all around just trying to get by each and every day. And so, um, you know, she's asking what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. You know, I'm just whatever. And, you know, I'm telling him everything's okay and I'm fine. And but really inside, I was just, I wasn't doing well at all. Yeah, you know, I was just, it was just a lot of pain and just a lot of just, I was very uncomfortable where I was headed. And so, as we're talking, he asked me like, you know, we start getting a little deeper in our conversation. And uh, he's somebody I would ask questions for, like I said, because he was such a, he was a very savvy businessman, but uh, he was also very creative so he's somebody I want to pick his brain you know I want to learn from and so uh, I mean for instance <laughs> I used to do uh, Rick hired me to so I used to do landscaping I used to do lawn care and yeah, I still do some of it now but uh, I used to treat his lawn for, like fertilizer and stuff like that and uh, you know get it really green seed it and everything so yeah, that's how him and I really got a good connection and uh you know, we're sitting there talking, I'm like, you know, uh, or no, excuse me, I got a little off track here. What I meant by that was when I used to do Rick's lawn, because he was such a businessman, there were times where uh, Rick started his own cable company. It was called Senior TV, and they made cable for, like, uh, private companies and stuff like that, like nursing homes and local businesses and all that, uh, hotels. They used a lot of his those companies those places use a lot of his they used his cable and so and he created his own tvs and so uh i remember a couple of times when i'm getting that here there were times where he'd be sitting there write me a check for the work i did and he'd be on the phone with the head of direct tv signing a deal inking a deal and so i was like wow this dude here he's i just saw how he he was able to do so many things at one time and make it all work and flow. And so that's why I became very inspired by him, wanted to learn from him more. And uh, so we're sitting there, we're talking, and uh, you know, Rick goes, hey, you know, what do you got planned for yourself? What are you doing? I said, well, at that time, I had thought about a podcast. You know, I've watched a lot of podcasts, like I mentioned on the show. I had thought about a lot of, uh, you know, ideas I had for it, just kind of sharing my story, having people on, all of that. And so I said, hey, I'd like, you know, I'm talking about, talking about thinking about doing a podcast and you know, sharing my story and all that. And he goes, really? And he says, and I kind of was giving like a bunch of excuses, like, you know, yeah, I got to figure out this, this, and this. And, you know, I had the idea, but I didn't put any action, real action towards it to actually do it. And so... Uh, you know, I'm sitting there talking to him, but 
you know, the why I always remember that day is because as I'm sitting there telling Rick all this, he kind of just looked at me and he's like, he's like, yeah, just, just go do it. Like, just start it. Just start doing it and just go for it. And, uh, he made it sound so simple too, because in my head at that time, I'm sitting there, you know, really like overanalyzing it. I'm nervous. I was scared. I'm like, there's no way I'm not ready to tell my story publicly. Is that really what I want to do? You know, this is a stupid idea. But you see, somebody like Rick, uh, Rick Briggs was his full name, but I don't know if I said his full name, Rick Briggs, look him up online. But, uh, you know, Rick, that's why he was so successful, why I looked up to him, and why, uh, you know, Rick unfortunately passed away suddenly uh, last November. And so, you know, it's been crazy when he passed to hear how many people he inspired, like myself. You know, he inspired so many other people like myself with his story, but just the way he approached life, his mindset, his attitude, and just... He was just a go-getter. Like he, he had a creative idea. You know, he would think of things that nobody was thinking of, and people would think it was way out of space. You know, like you know, people were like, why the hell would you do that? Like that's crazy. And he would go for it. He didn't care what people thought. And that was the whole thing about Rick that really inspired me the most. Is he didn't give a damn what anybody thought. He had an idea. <laughs> and that guy, go read his history. Uh, you can go on. I wrote. I wrote like a little. Uh, like a, a letter, I guess you could say. It's on go to lifeweb360.com and type in Rick E. Briggs. And you'll see all kinds of testimonies and just stories, and photos, and you'll be able to really see videos. And like I said, I wrote something on there. And so go check that out. But back to Rick. Rick, you know, like I said, he was the, his, the way he approached life. Everything was just so inspiring. And so, you know, at that time, uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, I have the idea. This is what I want to do. Blah, blah, blah. But I got a lot of excuses. And so, you know, but when I sit at the Rick, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to do it. He's just like, yeah, hey, you should. Just do it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, just to hear somebody say it's so simple. Like, you, you should do it. Like. Don't, what are you waiting for? Like, just start doing it now. Like, you got an idea, go for it. Do it. Don't wait. And, you know, I really sat and thought about that. And we sat there for a while. We uh, eventually got the bike loaded in the van. We were, had to do all this other stuff we were doing. We had to load the van up. He, he, at that time, he, that day, he was getting the bike loaded up in the van. Because he was going up to uh, out of state, north to park his bike and he was going to go bike for like a week and uh, Rick was a very <laughs> uh, one of the most interesting travelers I've ever seen this this guy did some crazy stuff I remember the first time when we moved into our house <laughs> we met his wife Pam uh, and we're sitting there talking to Pam she came over and you know was awesome to us and said hey I welcome to the neighborhood and you know <laughs> she pulls Rick up on the phone Rick's over in Iceland fishing <laughs> and so and then he, he would always send you, anybody who knew Rick, Rick would always send you like funny photos and just like, he, he was just like the ultimate just jokester, but just an incredible human being. And, uh, and I only knew this guy for, gosh, I only knew him for four and a half years. I think, yeah, four and a half, which, you know, that's really a short time. And so in that four and a half year period, I learned a lot about this guy. Him and I, like I said, because I did work for him. And we just became, we had a really good relationship we developed. And so, um, but you know, as time went on from that day, I really look back now where I am now. And I was just like, gosh, his advice was so true. You know, just, just do it. You know, that was his whole thing. Just do it. Don't wait. Quit putting it off. And up until I started this podcast all the way back in, what was it, uh, April 2nd, <laughs> like I said, that week leading up to that podcast, whew, gotta hydrate, anyways, 
that week leading up to that podcast, uh, it was one of the toughest weeks of my life. You know, everybody kept telling me, like, they would ask, you know, hey, when are you starting the podcast? Hey, we're waiting for it. Hey, we would love to hear you. Hey, hey, hey. And I'd be like, yeah, it's coming. You know, it's coming. <laughs> and it was never coming. I was just putting it off. Like, yeah, two weeks, it's coming. Don't worry. A couple months, I'm working on it. I wasn't working on anything. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, that week, though, leading up to that first uh, episode I did, where, it was where I've been, you know, I got, that was one of the toughest weeks of my life. I got, you know, looking back on it now, God put me through some things that week that really moved me to push me to that microphone. Uh, it was a Saturday, to that Saturday, to do that. And when I woke up that morning, it wasn't even decided. It just happened. Like, it just, I wasn't even playing. I woke up, but I went out that morning, and I just, something was really, to the week I just went through, and just, you know, I really just felt compelled that day. Like, you know what? Today's the day. Like, no more waiting. But I also thought of Rick. And when I thought of Rick, I thought of that day a year ago today. And when he said, you know, he looked at me. And that was the reason why that's also important because that was actually the last day I really spent with Rick. Because after that, like I said, he traveled a lot. Uh, you know, he did a lot of things. You know, he was always on the go. So I didn't really see him. I wouldn't see him always at his house for a period or so, you know. And so uh, that was the very really last, like, day I really spent and we got to talk to him. And that was the last message he left me with. It was just don't wait. <laughs> just go do it. And uh, so when I did that first episode back in April, you know, that day, that's what I thought of was what Rick told me. And I just said, you know what? Today's the day. I also went out when I was out that morning. I think I, ex I explained this on one of my episodes I did a while back where I talked about that day, uh, uh, April 2nd of this year, where, I, you know, I was out driving that morning, and, you know, I saw, like, I was going through the, the gorge down in Akron. I was driving through there, just out cruising around back in my hometown and, uh, you know, going past where I used to live and just kind of reminisce a little bit and, you know, my anxiety was high. I was, you know, just going through a lot. But I remember I saw a real, like, homeless person. And I say real, just, you know, sometimes there are people out there that, you know, collect money that aren't really homeless. And they just stand out there. It's like, a, which is a shame. Because there really are people out there that are homeless and really going through it. And, uh, you know, crazy around that time last summer, uh, right before that, right around in July, right before, uh, it was about the middle of July. I was out biking one day, and I was actually over in the gorge. And uh, as I'm going down the hill, if anybody knows when you drive through the gorge, it's like a steep hill. You go down both ways until you get to the bridge. You go over the water. And so I'm going down, coming from the, where Swenson's is. And so I'm going down the hill, and as I'm going, it's really hot that morning. It was about 1 o'clock, and it's about 90 degrees already. It's hot and humid. And I'm coming down the hill, and I see this guy with this just big-ass book bag on him, like giant book bag, and he's just like barely holding on to the railings at the bridge, and he just looked like he was struggling. And he kind of flagged me down. He's like, hey, man. He's like, hey, you got some water on you, brother? Do you got anything on you? Like, please, I need something. And uh, luckily, I threw extra water in my bag that day. <laughs> kind of funny, I did. And... Um, you know, I remember I said, yeah, 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 I got you. And uh, I could tell he was homeless, and you could tell the guy, you know, had a drug history. And, you know, I'm not putting anybody down. It's a judgment-free zone here. You know, I know everybody's got their issues, and, uh, you know, it is it's part of life. Unfortunately, some people go down the wrong paths. And so, uh, but, you know, I stopped and talked to this guy for a minute. Like, I had, I think I, all I had on me in cash was, like, five bucks. I gave him, like, five bucks and a water and yeah, I remember. I, I maybe I even remember when I looked in my bag. I reached in my bag, and the guy was like, after I gave him the water, he's like, I knew I had a five in there, so I was looking for it. And uh, he was looked at me. He goes, "I'll take anything." But when he said that, he said it so like somber and just like, like I I could have gave that guy literally like a used sweaty shirt i could have gave him my sweaty shirt i had on from by you know and gave it to him he would have been grateful for it. that's how 
low this guy was, you know, at that time in his life. And hopefully he's better now. But, um, yeah, I remember I just hated him in the water. And he was a little calmer now. He took some sips and he was calmed down a little bit. And I remember I just looked at him and he's like, thank you so much. And I said, you know, I told him, I said, hey, man, you know, Jesus loves you, brother. And uh, just remember that. And he kind of looked at me and just gave me a wink and uh, just kept, we turned around and kept walking in opposite directions. And, yeah, I remember that day too, in particular. I remember I was just biking down the road and eventually I, I was heading back towards my house. And I was, you know, just looking around. And I was just like, I can't believe that somebody is living like that. You know, he, this guy, you could tell he's living in the woods, just going all over and, you know, just probably sleeping by the water. A lot of people in Akron, if, you, if you're from Akron or the area, you know, there's a big homeless problem right now. And there's always been a homelessness. There's homeless everywhere, but, uh, you know, especially in bigger, in city, more inner city environments. But uh, Akron in particular is really bad right now. I think Akron has like the number one eviction rate in all the state of Ohio. And so, uh, you know, there was just a lot going on last summer too with the homeless i mean it was bad sometimes when i was out biking i would see it and it was just really sad and uh it still is getting worse today but you know that's a whole nother topic but you know it's just crazy i was going on my way home and i was like i can't believe you know 10 minutes from where i am this is how people are sleeping you know i, I fortunately i have a roof over my head i got clean water food uh you know fresh clothes and Every, you know, I have more than what I more than I need, right? And so, but there's people living like that. And like I was saying, in Akron, a lot of times, especially on the Cuyahoga River, uh, a lot of them will take mattresses down by the water. I've seen, and they'll sleep right next to the water all night. And it just is what it is. No matter if there's bugs on them or what it is, you know, the conditions outside. It could be cold. It could be hot. You know, so it's pretty sad, but. Fast forward back to that day in August, or excuse me, uh, April 2nd, the day I, I did my first show. Like I said, I was out driving that morning, and, uh, you know, I remember just thinking about that guy, thinking about what Rick told me that day. Uh, by the way, if there's noise in the background, there's a train coming. But, um, you know, I thought about that day last year, a year ago, what Rick told me about just going and just doing it. And so... That was it. I thought about both those guys, the homeless guy. I thought about Rick. And then I, on my way home that day, April 2nd, we were heading back towards my house. I saw another homeless person standing around the corner. And, uh, hold on one second. Get that off my screen. But, uh, you know, I just thought about all that. And that's what, in the week I just went through, and that really pushed me you know, to the mic that day, and here I am now, 28 episodes in, but not only that, guys, my whole life is just, uh, it's just crazy how much my life's changed in a year, I mean, yes, I still have my days, I still have things I'm working through, but I'm just so much more happier, so much more in tune with myself, so much more just grounded, but grounded in truth, and what I mean by truth is God's truth, and because what is truth is God's truth. That's what I heard. I've heard Tony Evans say that before. What is truth is God's truth, right? And so, uh, for me, that was looking back a year later. Excuse me, looking back a year from where I was, it's just how much 180 I am. I've reconnected with so many different, so many people from my past, people I haven't talked to in years, just because you know during that six-year time period I went through, six seven years, I just kind of isolated myself I kind of went AWOL for a while because uh, you know I just wasn't comfortable being around people because where I was and uh, but now though it's just my confidence everything's changed I mean it's just I'd say confidence excuse me confidence I'm just more uh <clears throat> man the allergies are bad right here <laughs> these allergies boy but uh you know just everything's just different you know you know, now it's not even just confidence, it's certainty, right? I'm more certain in who I am. I'm certain in who I am because, I'm, like I said, every day I try to put on the armor of God. That's my goal every day. When I wake up in the morning, I put on the armor of God, right? And everybody knows what the armor of God is, all the different parts that go on your body. But the armor of God is all one, right? 
And so, and what I mean by one is, it's all Christ. That's what the armor of God is. It's Christ. It's all one. And so that's what I try to do every day now. I try to get in Scripture more than I've ever been. Uh, and I'm not perfect, guys. I'm not up here trying to act like I'm like this this great, you know, goody two shoe, you know, <laughs> you know. But like I'm just like this, uh, you know, like every day it's just perfect. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I also try to make a conscious effort because what happened last summer was I was getting pulled out by the world. The world pressures were getting to me, the distractions. I was off focused. I was not focusing on the Lord most fully, but I was also comparing myself to people and things that didn't matter. You know, the world was making me feel that way. That's how I felt. I felt like I had to be somebody. And that's what it was for six years, you know, going back to even my where a lot of my anxiety really took off was my freshman year of high school. I felt like I had to be somebody for somebody else. I felt like I was being trying, I felt like I was being made to be somebody. And so, and that put a lot of pressure on me. It made me put more pressure on myself. And so, you know, again, with this, this reflection I've had today, just looking back to a year ago that day, but also on that day, you know, so I, I talked to Rick for a while that day. We put the bike in the, the whole thing with the bike and the van and uh, he's like all right i'll see you later he's gonna he i remember he texted me the next day when they made it there and sent me the photo of him getting out of the bike out of the van it was like a funny photo he did because he was nervous about getting it out of the van by himself and but uh he made it and it was fine but so i was like all right i'll talk to you later i'll, I'll text you tomorrow and uh that was one of our last conversations and so i remember i ended up leaving i actually went back to my house i, I ended up going over to rick's like I was over for like an hour and a half I spent with this guy uh, and I'm grateful for it obviously that you know that happened that day it wasn't planned um, and so I remember I went back to the house like well I might as well just eat lunch real quick I ate lunch I remember I still went and biked up to the bike shop and I was real anxious still because my health anxiety was really kicking in then I remember I left the bike shop and I stopped at a park and I sometimes I'll stop at the park and I'll do like some sprints, some warm ups, like some stretches, like we used to, and like we play football growing up or sports. Uh, you know, I said, all right, let me stop, do a couple of sprints and stuff, and some stretches. And so I did a, I went and did that at the park. I felt okay. You know, my health anxiety was still kicking in. You know, everything I did was based around survival and fear at that time. And so uh, I remember I went home, and later that night, was you know the day before uh, july 30th was my cousin's birthday my cousin jimmy and my cousin jimmy and i are really close he's like a brother to me and yesterday was his birthday happy birthday to you but uh <laughs> you know so i remember this was a saturday july 31st last year we were all going to go meet at a restaurant that night and so and i at that point i still wasn't really like getting out at all <laughs> like even interacting a whole lot like i should have talking to people but I said, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to just try. And so, and I knew it was going to be real busy. The place we went to was it's a pretty busy place, especially on the weekends. Uh, so I, I'm sitting there, I get home, I take a shower, I get ready. I remember I was like, taking a shower, I'm getting real nervous, I'm second-guessing myself, do I really want to go? You know, there's a lot of doubt creeping in. And, you know, looking back on it now, I didn't, I wasn't really <laughs> prepared mentally, especially with that kind of anxiety to... I was really just weighing it, you know, I'm like, all right, well, I'll just try, and it is what it is, right, and so, which is what a lot of people with anxiety do, every day is just trying to get by, you know, let me just try today, and we'll see what happens, right, and so, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I did, I remember on the way there, and it was only like a two-minute drive from my house, too, and uh, I remember I was just real nervous, and I'm just a little anxious. I, I, we get there, I'm like, all right, I'm asking my mom and dad, like, you sure I'll be okay? I'm asking for reassurance. I'm just, so I, they're like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Just get in there, relax. I'm like, all right, let me just get in there. So I walk inside the restaurant, and my family's already there, my cousin, his family, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. So we get in there. I sit down at the table. I am start laughing, you know, and everybody's joking around, and, hey, how you doing, and everything, and good to see you and you know i sit down from there i'm all right waitress comes over takes my order and 
So I'm sitting there. But I started to really, as I'm sitting there at the table, I started to feel a lot of adrenaline, a lot of just symptoms, a lot of just, and what it was is my, my mind was telling me, run. Like, looking back on it now, it was my inner child, my subconscious mind was asking me, like, hey, are we safe? Like, what are you doing? Like, get out of there. You should be at home right now. You shouldn't be sitting here at the table. This is, this is too dangerous, right? Because, you know, my mind would try to keep me, that's what your subconscious mind does. Because I've had past experiences before that day where I had bad panic attacks at a restaurant. And a lot of times, especially with agoraphobia, with GAD, you know, you start to, your body wants to keep you out of those, <laughs> your subconscious mind wants to keep you out of those situations again because they're very traumatic, you know, and they were very traumatic experiences. And, uh, you know, once you go through one of those, like, uh, multiple times, even not even just multiple times, even just one time, you don't want to go through it again, you know, right? And anybody out there that has gone through anxiety, leave a comment below. I'm sure you guys can relate, you know. <laughs> when you go through one experience, you, it can, in, in a particular environment, a setting, situation, whatever it is, uh, where your mind was, the time of the year, the day, anything, everything that's associated with that experience gets stored in your memory, in your databases, right, in the back of your head. And a lot of times, especially when we're between, between the ages of zero to 10, you know, that's where a lot of our experiences show up. And, uh, you know, so that's why those things start to replay. So I was in a situation where I'm like, okay, I'm here, I'm sitting at this table, now what? And that's my mind was asking me, like, hey, what are we doing here? Like, you know what happened last time you did this, right? You panicked real bad. You embarrassed yourself. You ran out of the restaurant. You went home. You were upset. You know, when you started to question everything, you had doubt. And so as I'm sitting there that day, it's the intensity of the symptoms really started to ramp up. I was starting to get really, really tense. And I remember there was a, another group of people that showed up at our table uh, who, who weren't strangers, people I knew. I didn't know they were coming, which is fine. Um, but I remember they sat they sat right next to me, and I remember I just felt like now I'm like felt like I was really crowded at the table, and uh, as I'm sitting there, I keep my dad was sitting next to me. And I kept whispering to my dad like, "Hey, this anxiety's getting real bad." Like, "Hey, hey, hey," I'm asking for reassurance. He's like, "You're all right." He's like, "You're all right. You're all right. Just relax." Just and I was on my phone. Um, I got on my phone trying to look at things, try to distract myself. But you know, distracting is never works trying to distract yourself out of a situation or an environment or, or excuse me like distract yourself from your symptoms or your anxiety you know never really works and so it really just makes it worse because you're just suppressing it more and more and your body inside is like just running 100 miles an hour and just it's just ramping up more and more and so as i'm sitting there at that table you know I, it just really started to ramp up more and more and especially when the, the table was full, everybody was there. And there's people sitting next to me now, to my right. My dad was sitting to my left. Now there's people on my right. And I just feel really like, I felt like, looking back on it, what was really going on in my mind was I was in a busier place. I hadn't really been out in six years up to that point. Uh, on and off I had been, but that was the first time in a while I really went out like that. I sat at a table with my family and, you know, and... What really was hitting me was just like, I felt like I was concealed. Like, what if I embarrassed myself? Like, these people around me don't really know. They didn't, nobody really knew what was really going on with me. And nobody knew what was, what's been going on with me for the past six years up until I did that first video, right? And so, because I try to conceal it. I don't want people to know about it. I was embarrassed, you know. I was like, I was trying to protect an image of myself that was a false image. And a lot of it goes back to, like I said earlier, I there was times in my life where I felt like I was being, I had, was being forced to be somebody. I feel like I had to be somebody to fit in. And a lot of that replayed, replayed, replayed. And up that moment, that day, a year ago today, when I'm sitting at that table at that restaurant, you know, I was having, on the inside, I'm like, or on the outside, I'm like smiling, trying to keep a smile on my face. Everything's okay. I'm having a good time. But on the inside, I was going crazy. And it got to the point where, I was like, okay, I gotta, my, I was like, I can't keep sitting, the tension was so bad, I was starting to panic, uh, get the trembles, and I, you know, everybody knows those symptoms, the GAD panic, trembling, those are 
shortness of breath, everything. And so I was getting body zaps where you feel like your body just like wants to just, it's like you just want to like run out of your body. It's like an outer body experience and depersonalization, the whole nine. And so I remember I just, I got to the point, guys, to speed up the story. I got, I got to the point where I, I just looked at my dad and I said, okay, I got to go out to the car. I, I just turned and I just booked that. <laughs> I just booked it out of that place. Looking back, well, I just got off. I got up from that table. I didn't even say anything to anybody. All I said, I just looked at my dad and said, I got to go. It's getting bad. I just went out to the car. I got up, ran the hell out of that restaurant, went out to the car in the parking lot. And now when I got out the car in the parking lot, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I just embarrassed myself again. You know, what's going on with me? Because at that, at that point, I was trying to also logically, you know, I, I had studied anxiety a lot to that point. You know, I mentioned this in my uh, video I did for the anxiety guy recently. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's my experience with his program. And, you know, I tell this in that story about, uh, you know, or excuse me, in that video, I explain how for a while I was listening to his videos and I educated myself on anxiety, but I was trying to logically heal myself. And trying to logically heal yourself is impossible from anxiety because you really make it worse because you put so much, everything's either good or bad. Like, you know, you put your eggs all in one basket. There was no, there was no real process or real plan in my life. There was no guidance in my life on how, really how to you know, start healing from this and move forward. And, you know, I was really living in the past a lot, just you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda, I wish I would have had this happen, wish I would have, you know, you know, been with this person, wish I would have did, you know, played these sports, and I, you know, I didn't get to live out the things I had planned for me, you know, I feel like I was really close to a lot of things I wanted, and then all of a sudden I got taken away, and I was in a complete 180, you know, but, uh, so a lot of that was really getting to the boiling point last summer, especially around that time, and so, I get out to the car in the parking lot, and I'm like, my dad's like, hey, you want you to take it easy for a minute and try to go back in? And I was so embarrassed, guys, that I ran out of there like that without saying anything to anybody. I just said, you know what, just take me home. And so I remember I got in the car. I just felt real defeated on the way home. And I remember my dad was driving. I remember I, for some reason I got in the back seat, I think just so I can relax for a minute. And he was driving up, driving home, and. I remember looking at him, and I was just like, what the hell just happened? And I remember my dad was looking at me, and he's like, he just kind of told me straightforward, he's like, hey, like, you can't keep doing, what you're doing is not working, you know, what you're doing is not working. Yes, you're doing, you've learned a lot of things, you've made some progress, up. I did make a lot of good progress, pushing myself up to that point, but he's like, you really need to take the next step, and really put all this behind you, and really you know, really just be who you want to be, you know, start becoming who you want to be. And it's funny, I started to think about what Rick told me earlier that day. And I remember we get home, and he was just going to drop me off, because he was going to go back to the <clears throat> the restaurant, obviously, right? And so, luckily, the restaurant wasn't far from our house, so I could do that, where he could take me home. But anyways, uh, we're, so we sat in the driveway, though, for a while, and we just started talking, we got a deep conversation, my dad and I, and uh, I remember just sitting there, just upset, and just like, where do I go from here? And all those things from my past just hit me. I was thinking about everything in that car, and it just everything just hit me. Like I was just like, you know, where do I go from here? And I was so scared. I mean, my confidence just was going downhill because of what just happened, and what happened. You know, things that happened before that too. Incident last summer, and so let me get this off the screen. So. You know, I'm sitting there, I remember my dad said, you know what, maybe it's time to just, you need to take that step, go see, the, go see, a, go get help, go see a counselor, like just start, go talk to somebody else, somebody you don't know, and get it off your chest, somebody that can help guide you, and luckily we knew a place around where I live, that my uh, people I know have went to, and uh, there was a guy, person I see now that works there, that we we're familiar with because he's, he's helped some people I know. Um, and I was putting it off for a while. Like, I don't need that. Like, I don't need help. I, I can figure it out on my own. Like, I, I got it all planned. Like, I'll be fine. But I wasn't fine. And so I needed, and so I was putting it off. I'm just like putting off my podcast. And uh, 
So I remember I sat there in that car that night and I just said, you know, my dad told me, like, just take that first step and watch what happens. Like, just do it. And um, so I said, you know what? You're probably right. Maybe I should call and make an appointment. And so that was the start that day, July 31st, 2021. So I thought about calling for, you know, get an appointment done to see somebody and just, but so that what happened through the month of August, the month of August, actually a, a rough month for me too. It was kind of similar to that week back in uh, the end of March, early April, I did the podcast, except this time I got pushed for a whole month and I got to the end of that month where I said, I thought about that day. Uh, this is towards the end of August last year. So then I thought about that day. Uh, a month prior <laughs> when I was just July 31st and that's when I really yeah it was about a month later is when I actually really I really I finally made the call to see somebody and to get the help I needed <clears throat> you know just or not to say help but just to talk to somebody else and to start to really you know get my life back together and get on work and start heading towards my dreams and goals and but I, just first just kind of settling down and just you know, unwinding for a while. I needed to like just. I feel like I just needed to unwind for a while, and so, um, yeah. I mean, that's what that day a year ago today. And that's why I wanted to share the story today because it's crazy looking back a year ago, all the events that happened that day uh, on July thirty first, twenty twenty one. And so, you know, guys, I hope this, you know, by sharing this today, what I went through. You know, and so I probably should actually finish the story though first. Uh, so when I started seeing the counselor about a month after that, you know, things started to slow down for me. But by talking to somebody else and just allowing myself to be vulnerable, uh, I started to get somewhere. You know, I started to feel better. I was start just by expressing it. Yeah, you know, I wasn't containing it anymore. And the first step to not containing it was just telling somebody random, like. I didn't know this person before I started going there. And so, uh, you know, so, and then it took step by step. I, I signed up for Dennis's program, the Anxiety Guys program. I started following the program. And it was a sl- I'm, it was more of a slower process for me. And so, but then it led, though, all that progress and being vulnerable led to April 2nd of this year to finally... Uh, you know, film my first podcast, and it's just been surreal ever since I filmed that first episode. You know, it's like I say all the time, guys, and you've heard the saying: "The truth shall the truth shall set you free." That's what that day was for me. The truth set me free when I finally got on that mic because it started doing this right here because I felt like this is what God was calling me to do. You know, this is why God gave me the idea and the vision for years. And God will do that. You know, he will, uh, fix my glasses. God will do that. You know, he, he'll give you an idea and a vision and a plan and thoughts of things he wants done. And so, or you know, things he needs you to do. And for a while, I felt like I knew God wanted me to do this. Like I said, I kept putting it off. But days like July 31st last year, days like April 2nd and the week leading up to that, you know, God had to move me (laughs) because I was putting it off. So he had to move me to shake me up a little bit. And, you know, sometimes things get worse before they get better. And especially when you're in a spiritual warfare, you know, you're a follower of Christ, you're always in a spiritual warfare. The enemy's always trying to stop you because he's trying to prevent a plan he knows God has for you. And so, you know, just it's insane just to think where I am a year later in reflection. And if you guys got something you want to share, maybe where you were a year ago, maybe you're just like me, maybe you're in a complete 180, or maybe you're somebody out there who's where I was trying to, you know, you have a plan, you have goals and desires, but you're putting it off. You know, I hope this helps you to decide, like, just start today. And it doesn't have to be anything big, guys. 
just take it one day at a time. It's a slow process, right? You know, some of the YouTubers that I know that are bigger YouTubers that have some of my mentors that I look, you know, they've kind of helped me out start doing this. You know, they all tell me, you know, hey, it's a slow grind. It's a slow grind, like growing your channel, uh, you know, gaining more followers. But it's a slow grind in everything you do in life. It's a process. You know, there's really no timetable for healing. Everybody goes at their own pace. And so, um, you know, for me, it's been a step-by-step -step approach. It's been that slow grind. But it's also, uh, just by talking and saying the truth and standing on truth, it's led me to where I am now a year later. You know, it's and that's the basis of this whole story today is, you know, don't wait. Just start today and just... Say your truth. Say what's, what you're feeling. You have an idea? Share it with others. You know, we're all unique. God made us all unique in his own image. We all have something to bring to the table, whether you believe it or not. Maybe your self-esteem's a little low. You know, I've been there, but you don't believe in yourself, right? And so, uh, but just start today, guys. Just take the first step. You know, like I said, it's a step-by-step it's a -step approach. It doesn't have to be so dramatic and I think for a while I, that's what helped that was part of the reason why I put it off for so long just because the pressure I was putting too much pressure on myself and that's what our world does we feel like to do something it's got to look a certain way you know uh sorry I got a bug on me <laughs> these bugs you know everything's got to be to a certain standard you know I wanted everything to look like a production and all this stuff but in reality just getting on and if you have a, a if you stand on something if you stand on truth you stand on a story you have something to give to the table that's all you need you know you don't need all the other bullshit that our society tells us we need right and so for me that's what it was and looking back at what rick told me that day just go do it it's that simple it really is that simple and that's really the main basis of this whole story today is you know we don't have to make you know, guys, things don't have to be so complicated. Things don't have to be so dramatic and thought out. A lot of times, everything we want, it's just right in front of us. And a lot of times, God's just waiting on us. You know, the plans, what he has for us is there. What we want is right there. But it's just Satan gives us so much doubt in our mind. And we have so much just uh, the doubt, the fear, the anxiety. And just, uh, like I said, I think the how the world will perceive us, you know, that's what stops us a lot of times is roadblocks. And so, but I think the biggest thing too that I want to share before I end this is, you know, it's funny because I came to this part for a reason. And if anybody that's followed me on Instagram knows, uh, or anybody that knows me, knows that one of my good friends is Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews and I met when we were freshman year of high school and we've been good friends ever since and uh you know mike and i went through we're both going through some things around the time we went to school together so we really you know helped guide each other and uh but you remember mike came on my show and mike now is the producer for popular youtube amp uh you know he's over there killing it their channel's just exploding uh, shout out to you mike keep going bro and uh and so but it's funny because at this park i'm at right now Somebody randomly put, I don't know if you can see it, Michael Matthews, that's his name, on this rock. And it's crazy because well, I, I sent, I posted this on my, uh, the first time I noticed this when I came here, I sent it to him. I hit him up. I was like, yo, did you come to this park? And he's like, no, nah, I don't even know where that is. He goes, I never did that. And so we've kind of had this mystery of like who put his name on the rock. But anywho. But uh, I wanted to show that because you remember when Mike came on my show, there's a clip I took from that episode. It was number 12, I believe. And I took a clip from that show, and it's on my Instagram of Mike. And what Mike said that day on that show was, this is the biggest thing where I am right now. This is the biggest, the last thing I'll leave you with for this episode is, you know, Mike said, you know, I used to pray God, you know, bring this girl into my life, God. Bring these people in my life. Bring this, uh, you know, just bring this X, Y, and Z in my life. You know, you guys know what I mean. And so, 
But he said, you know, what I do now before I go to bed every night is, is pray to God. Is God, I just want your will to be done. That's it. And the biggest thing I've noticed, you remember what I said earlier, putting on the full armor of God, just trying to put on Christ every day. That's really what it is. It's all connected because in this society we live in, if you're not in your scripture, if you're not really just embedded into Christ and it's part of your daily practices, you know, I, I mean, like I said, guys, I'm not perfect. A lot of times I check myself. A lot of times I say things because it's not just a reminder I'm trying to remind you guys. It's a reminder to me, too. I'm checking myself. You know, I ask myself, you know, how many times I opened up that book this week? You know, am I pray? Did I really pray a lot? When I was in certain situations, who did I look to first? Where did I look, you know, what guidance did I look for? And so I remember when Mike said that that day, you know, that's kind of where I was heading to at that time. And to look back where I am now, a year later from what I, the story with Rick and that day at the restaurant and just kind of this whole six, seven year journey. That's really what it is. That's what's helped me the most. And what's helped me the most is, you know, uh, just putting on, putting on Jesus every day. That's really all it is. Standing in truth every day. And when you align yourself with, you know, yes, I have goals and desires, like Mike said, you know, you can ask God for this X, Y, and Z. But X, Y, and Z, all the things, your goals and your dreams are all connected to one thing. It's connected to God's will. Because if you align yourself with God's will and with God's truth, with what is true, all those things will come together. And, you know, like this week, this week, or the tongue twister there, this week alone for me, you know, I had some things happen where... You know, just, where I was just kind of like in awe, like, wow, like, a lot of my goals and dreams and just, you know, the people I'm connecting with now and private and, like, you know, more uh, known people. I'm just like, I can't believe. And not only that, connecting with people that I love, my old, some of my old friends, uh, people I've met recently in the last couple of years I've really formed relations with, like my man Mike Antonace. You know, Mike Antonace and I really started to become good friends within the last about uh, year and now we're he's one of my great friends you know i love mike because mike's authentic and mike is who he is and so but to say what all that saying you know when you align yourself with god's will and you allow you know remember i was talking about the balance between doership and allowance right you know yes we can make things happen but a lot of times we try to force things to happen and last summer and the time in the years before that I was trying to force things to happen but a lot of times just by allowing things allowing your body to experience those symptoms in a panic attack allowing yourself to ride the wave when you're having an anxiety attack or panic allowing God to lead you and allowing God's timing to work and it's not easy because you know we get our patience that's the biggest thing is patience and just you know, our faith really gets tested so, man, when you really just allow and just give it to God every day and just get so indebted into God every day and prayer and scripture and just meditation, everything you do throughout the day. And it's not like, I'm, like I said, guys, earlier, I'm not doing it. It's not like all day, every day, I'm like always in my scripture. There's days where I, or time period maybe, where I don't do it as much. And I sort of get a little sidetracked. And so, but I'm just at the point in my life now where, like I said, looking back from a year ago, a year ago, reflecting, you know, this week alone, like Thursday night, I was out. Speaking of Rick, I was out at a park where Rick used to uh, go and kayak out of. And uh, before he passed, the time before he passed, he created a tubing company. It was called WTF, which stood for what the you know what. And so, uh, and he did it for fun. It was when 2020, when COVID happened, you know. Rick was like, I want to get people out. I want to start having some fun. It was the summertime. So he created this tubing company, you know, little rafts he float down the river on. And I remember when he died, I saw a video of him at this park not too far from here. Probably about, you know, it's probably about 10 minutes from where I am right now, out in Mineral Falls. And I remember, uh, you know, there was a video of Rick, and he was at the top of this hill out there on where the, they would launch out. 
and he took the tube and he just threw it in the water and he was telling everybody like, all right go get in like let's go have some fun and i was out there at that park the other day and i remember i just thought i was standing right where he was standing in that video and i just thought of him doing that and i was like and it made me think of what happened a year ago today you know just go and do it you know he threw that raft in that water that day he told everybody let's go have some fun just go do it and something i feel like the other day was just like i, I imagined that i was standing right where he was in that video this was like two years ago and i i just was sitting there where I, like i said i was standing where he was and i just imagined him throwing the raft and i imagined everything he taught me or i i remembered everything he told me a year ago that day and i just sat there and i was like wow this was thursday this week and i was just like wow like look where i am a year later like i'm just so much better so much more at peace just grounded and i feel like i'm a lot of my goals and dreams like i said are really just uh coming to fruition now and yes i still got things i'm working on yes i still got ways to go and you know life will throw you a different direction sometimes but you know i feel like now i'm more just in a flow state it's kind of like this water right here how the water just flows you can see the rocks right there yes it's kind of like this water yes you hit some rocks but the water keeps flowing like right just like right here and so i feel like now i'm just kind of more in a flow state and just kind of just you know aligning myself with god's will and you know just to complete trust but i just have the ultimate trust and faith that where he's taking me right now is just uh, an unbelievable place i can't even imagine i mean there's been some things that have happened even recently and i just sit back and i'm like <laughs> i never thought that would happen again like, or i can't believe i'm actually like doing that now i can't believe i'm here you know i can't believe i'm feeling this way again i feel like how i used to feel i feel like a kid again i feel like you know in a good way like excited relaxed and just uh just grateful man i'm just completely grateful uh, i'm truly just honored that god put me in this position to even do this show he had you know just to whoever watched it how many people watch it, it doesn't matter just sharing the story with you guys and so and how many people it's helped and, you know i've reached people i've connected with that i didn't really know or that i've known in the past maybe at some point we haven't talked in a long time or never talked and just to hear their stories and how they they say hey you know i've listened to your show and it's helped and, you know we start dialoguing and we start connecting a little more and getting to know each other and um, you know they tell me about their journeys i give them some advice and a lot of them have gone on to the anxiety guys site and maybe some have followed the program even now they're on their way and their healing journey and uh and so i'm gonna leave you guys with a challenge today though um uh, end this off you know i challenge you guys to share your story in some way whatever it is it doesn't have to be big or small find a way to share it with people with someone don't contain it. Don't do what I did. Don't contain because the more you contain, the more it eats you alive. All right? It builds up inside of you with suppressed emotion. And over time, it just builds up more and more and more. And so uh, that's my challenge for you guys. I, I want to hear you guys. We got some raptors coming down the river here. But, uh, you know, uh, some tubers, rather, coming down the river yelling. But anywho, uh, you know, I want to hear your guys' stories. If, if you guys ever want to hit me up in private, you know, if you're not comfortable, if you something I said, you need, you want to ask more questions on about anxiety or anything in life, feel free to hit me up. You know, I'm an open book. Uh, you know, I like talking to, I love to talk to you guys, and uh, you know, it's all good. You don't need to be shy. <laughs> so I used to be shy, but now I'm a lot more open. Just like I said, just more, uh, just more content and just more in love with where God's taking me and who I am. And uh, I just love where I am a year, where I am now, and just where I was from. I was ugh, from where I was a year ago. If I could spit that out, you know, I just love where I am now compared to where I was a year ago. Like I've said, and uh, you know, I'll leave you guys with that today. I hope this uh, story helped you guys. You know, sharing this reflection I've had, and uh, you know, yeah, that's all I got today, guys. I'll uh, love all you guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. And, uh, yeah, I want to hear your guys' story, too. So, but, uh, I'll see you guys later. I'm out of here. Gone.